People talk about dangerous jobs. Mountaineer, fireman, fact checker for Fox News. And then there's motherhood. The Mother Mystique by Irma Bombeck. Read by Carl Wallace. An 11 year old girl once wrote, Mrs. Bombeck, I do not understand mothers. How come my mom can hit anyone anywhere in the house at any distance with a shoe? How can she show without turning her head in the car that I'm making faces at my brother in the back seat? How could she be watching TV in the living room and know that I'm sneaking cookies in uh, the kitchen? Some of my friends also don't understand moms. They want to know how she can tell just by looking at them that they had a hot dog and three cokes before they came home from school for dinner. Or whether they're going to lose the sweater they hate. We think it's spooky the way the phone rings before we even pick it up, she says, five minutes. You all agree no one in the world has supervision, super hearing, or can smell quite like a mother. One guy said he had a piece of bubble gum which wrapped in foil in his shoe and his mom said, let's have the gum. You want to tear your uh, retainer out? Since you're right about kids all the time, we thought you could explain my moms to us. Sincerely, Kathy. Dear Kathy and friends, I find your letter most amusing. You make motherhood sound like uh, uh, Gene Dixon on a good day. Sit up, dear, and don't, don't hold this book so close to your face. You'll ruin your eyes. Actually, there's no mistake at all to being a mother. We all started as normal, average little children like yourself, who grew up and developed the usual x-ray vision, two eyes in the back of our head, bionic hearing, and olfactory senses that are sharpened by wet gym shoes. Uh, don't ask what olfactory is. Look it up in the dictionary. Mothers never considered any of these senses a bonus. We call them instincts for survival. Without them, we'd be mortal and vulnerable. Don't make such a face. You'll freeze that way, and then where will you be? Someday when your motherhood genes develop, you too will know when someone is in the refrigerator even though you're at a, a PTA meeting. You'll know shoes are wet and muddy when you can't even find them. Mothers are just normal people, really. We don't pretend to be perfect or have all the answers to, to, to child rearing. Why, throughout the years there are a lot of aspects of children which I, which I pro profess complete ignorance. For example, who is I don't know? Ever since I can remember, our home has harbored a fourth child. I don't know. Everyone sees him but me. All I know is he's rotten. Who left the front door open? I don't know. Who let the soap melt down the drain? I don't know. Who ate the banana was saving for the cake? I don't know. Frankly, I don't know is driving me nuts. He's lost two umbrellas, four pairs of boots, and a bicycle. He has 13 books overdue from the library, has brought home a paper from school in three years, and once left a thermos of milk in the car for three weeks. The other day the phone rang, ran from my mailbox, cut my leg, tore off a finger down the door, and got the phone just in time to see my son hanging up. Who was it? I asked breathlessly. I don't know. He hung up. When I told my neighbor about it, she said, Cheer up. I've had an invisible child for years. What's his name? Nobody. Is he rotten? You make Stennis the menace look like a statue. You crack the top of an heirloom candy dish, just the paper for anyone who gets to read it. Once I was driving the carpool, he nearly knocked, knocked me senseless with a ball bat. Ha, I said bitterly. You should have seen I don't know. He left 13 lights by the night when he was out. I don't know how much longer I can stand it. This morning at breakfast, I said to my husband, Who wants to go over for dinner this, this evening? He looked up and said, I don't care. That can only mean one thing. I don't know, has a brother. At what age is a child capable of dress dressing himself? Some say when a child can reach the clothes hamper without falling in, they are ready to assume responsibility for what they wear. A child develops individuality long before he develops taste. I've seen my kids strangle in the kitchen in the morning with outfits that need only one accessory, an empty gin bottle. There was always one child in the family who thrives on insecurities and must have her emotional temperature taken every five minutes. I call it the Parade of the Closet. Beginning at 7 a.m., she will appear at breakfast fully clothed and ready for school. Before the cereal had stopped exploding in the bowl, she disappeared to her room and is in another complete outfit. Four words from her mother, you look nice today. She's off again to her bedroom in tears for still another complete change. She plays the same musical clothes until she runs out of clothes, the bus leaves, her mother is institutionalized, whichever comes first. There was always a kid who has an aversion to clean clothes. He's allergic to creases and trousers, socks that have soft shoes, 
underwent to this folded, and sweaters you could sniff without passing out. He's a child who always applauds the ring around the collar uh, commercials. The opposite is the youngest who neither desires what is in his closet nor what is in the dirty clothes hamper. He wants what has to be ironed. I've always said, if I had nothing in my iron bag with a diaper, they can't wear a top hat and go to school dressed as a new year. Last year, we allowed our children to pack their own suitcases for our vacation. One wore a baseball cap and a pair of brown corduroys for an entire week. We told everyone he had brain surgery. Little one bought one coat, an old army coat belonging to his father. He looked like a deserter from the other side. The other one packed one pair of shoes, a red, blue, and white pair of sneakers with stars. The only time he didn't look out of place was under a basket in a coliseum. Last week, all three of my children looked worse than usual as they headed for the door. Why do you all look so rotten today, I asked. You want to scoop away or something? No, we're having our class pictures taken. It figures. Haven't I always loved what's-his-name best? We must start thinking of a name for a baby the moment she knows she's carrying one. She will write it out, say it aloud, try it in her friends, and embroider it on little shirts. When the baby is born, she will whisper her name softly in the ear, write a dozen of announcements, and file it in the courthouse records. A few years and a few kids later, she can't remember who you are. I've heard mothers go through 10 or 12 minutes before they get lucky and hit the right one. Once I wore my PJs wrong side out, and my mom, thinking it was a name tag, called me Dr. Denton for a week. Children seem to think there is something Freudian in this entire exercise. The old, if my mother really loved me, she would remember my name trauma. This is hogwash. I love Mark, Mary, Mike, Mill, Massa. What's his name with the same affectation, with the same affection as I love Brett, Ron, Evelyn, Mar, Trey. You know who you are. Our neighbor, neighborhood psychiatrist beats me out. He said there's nothing you generalize from mothers who can't put a name to their children right off the bat. Used to be a good day for me when I can remember what I called them for, let alone remember who they are. In talking with young Murray the other day, it was revealed that he was one out of seven children, and not once what he called it was he ever given the right name. Just because there were so many of us, he said, that it confused my mother. I hate to shoot his staring down, but for a long time when I was an only child, and I still got Sarah, Beth, Mildred, Vera, Edna, funny desperation when my brother would shout, Lauren had to call you before you answer. I yelled back until you got it right. Was I close? She said. And then it was someone in the neighborhood. It was like that, and she amused. I should have named you that. Then why did you name me Irma? Because it was easy to remember. Why can't we have our own apartment? We knew the kids would take it the wrong way. We had to do it anyway. Children, he said. Your father and I wanted to get our own apartment. One looked up from his homework, and the other two even turned on the volume on the TV set. What are you saying? We're saying we'd like to move out and be on our own for a while. But why, asked our daughter. Aren't you happy here? You have your own room and the run of the house. I know, but a lot of parents are just striking out on their own. It'd be expensive, said our son. Thought about utilities and phone bills and newspapers and a hundred little things you take for granted around here. We saw it all through. Spit it out, said our daughter. What's boring you about living with us? Did we ask too much? What do we ask you to do? Only cook, make beds, do laundry, take care of the yard? Keep the car in running order and bring in the money. Was that so hard? It's not that, I said gently. Just if we want to fix our own apartment and come and go as we please. If it's your car you want, why didn't you say so? We can make arrangements. It's not just the car. We'd be able to play our stairs when we want to and come in late without someone saying, Where have you been? And invite people over without other people hanging over uh, eat, eat, eating our chip dip. What will you do for furniture? We don't need all that much. We'll take a few small appliances, some linens, our bedroom suites, the typewriter, the luggage, the card table and chairs, the old TV you never used, and some pots and pans and a few tables and chairs. You call every day? We nodded. As I headed for the car, I heard one son whisper sadly, Wait till they get their first u u utility bill. They'll be back. Is there a life after mine? No one knows what a life expectancy is, but I have a horror of leaving this world and not having anyone in the entire family know how to replace a toilet tissue spindle. It's an awesome thought to have four grown people wandering around in a day saying, I thought she told you how. That it was saying, if I knew she was sick, I'd have paid attention. The social spindle isn't the only home skill that's been mastered by no one at our house. Consequently, I've put together a single family survivor manual for when mom is gone. Replacing toilet tissue spindle. 
Grass bolts spin them and push gently to one side when there's a spring action. The spring will release and you discard the old cardboard. Slip on new roll and insert one end of the spring only to the spring action side and listen for a click into place. Washing toothpaste offside the wash bowl. Before toothpaste is allowed to harden slash become a permanent part of the enamel, swish water from faucet over affected area and give a gentle nudge with wash plans or, or cloth. Sink will be ready for next slobby. Turning on the stove. Hot meals require a hot stove. Your stove is gas, and light by turning dial or handle while holding match over burner. If stove is electric, take forefinger and push firmly on button of desired heat. Caution. Do not put food, food directly on burner, but put it in a pan first. Closing a door. This is hard than it is. When door is ajar, make sure it is free of foreign objects, children, feet, packages. To grasp it firmly by the handle, give it a push until you hear it click. Slamming the door will not make it close any firmer than a push. Turning off a light. The same principle is used in turning off a light as in turning it on. If it's a wall switch, you flick the switch up and down until you can no longer uh, see the light. If it's a chain mechanism, you, you compress the chain between the thumb and forefinger and give it a tug. The light will extinguish. Operating a clothes hamper. Don't be intimidated because there are no instructions or dials on the lid. Bending from the weight, you simply pick up a sock, a pair of pants, or a towel, lift the lid of the hamper, and feed soiled clothes into it. The good furry would take it from there. Keep this manual handy for easy reference. Have to take this skill to me when I'm go? I'm not going. The end.